Okay, yeah. So thanks for coming down. Uh, we'll be doing an introduction on Telegram bots and Python. Can I just check, does everyone have basic Python experience here? Like you have used Python before, All right? Okay, cool. Okay, so a quick introduction. Um, why is this not working? Okay, yes, so my name is Azim. I'm from Agnes Hackers. Uh, and our event is organized by Xinyan and Yong Kang, who is not here, who are also from Agnes Hackers. So we run these Saturday workshops that basically introduce um, basic programming concepts and um, just come down if you're interested in what we're teaching. Right. Yes. Uh, okay, so um, for the Zoom folks, um, if you get stuck, use the raise hand function or send a message in the chat and don't flood it because um, then it becomes very hard to find the like like genuine queries, right? Um, okay, cool. So uh, what is a bot? A bot is a software application that's programmed to do certain tasks. And in the context of Telegram bots, um, you basically can give it one input and then it does something for you, right? So you can basically program it to automate some things for you. Um, why would you want to use a bot? Uh, the one main thing is that it's a completely navigationless or mostly navigationless interface. That means you don't need to dig around menu bars or whatever on a website to find things. Um, and neither do you need to go and Google for something to find a specific page. We are very familiar with like, you know, you Google like SOC curriculum 2020 or something, and then you go straight to the page. But imagine you couldn't do that. Then you have to dig around the website. Uh, with a bot, you don't need to worry about that because it gets the information straight for you, right? Um, so yeah, various um, sort of navigationless properties of bots. Um, the other thing that is really nice is you get a lot of very simple push alerts. So you, in native app development, you need to configure push alerts, which can be very annoying and difficult. Um, but on bots, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, so it's basically like getting a notification about text message. Um, there are no complex integrations you need to do. You don't need to worry about device-specific compatibility or compute compatibility because it's already on an app that people already use. Um, the other thing is that the UI is very familiar. So uh, you don't need to teach people to use your app. You don't need to do a whole UX sort of thing because you already know how to text on, a, on an app basically. Uh, and therefore the barrier to entry is very low for new users. That means you can get adoption if you're running something on the bot very quickly. Uh, yeah, so no need to download an app because it works with what you already have. So um, Telegram bots are for people who are not familiar. Um, Telegram is a chat messaging platform like WhatsApp or WeChat. Um, it's a cloud-based platform, so it's not pure peer-to-peer. Um, but the one thing that's great about Telegram is that bots are natively supported on the Telegram platform. That means you don't need to write some hacky second layer in between to pass messages. On the other hand, for example, WhatsApp doesn't natively support bots. So people need to go and hack into the WhatsApp API or whatever to support bots, right? And uh, we're all familiar with this interface. So we can see that it's very easy to go and do things. Uh, Bus Uncle used to be a bot in Singapore that was very popular. Now I think the popularity has gone down. But uh, for those who are Singaporeans, we've probably seen this before, right? Yeah, so why Telegram uh, native support for bots? Uh, it's a vast array of, hello, hello. Uh, let's take a seat, uh, I'm just doing the introduction. So yeah, um, so the vast array of SDKs that support how to build bots. So even if, so today we're doing it in Python, but if you are more comfortable in JavaScript or C-Sharp or whatever, um, there's a lot of SDKs out there, right? Um, and as I said, um, no device specific compatibility problems. Telegram abstracts all these things away. Um, so today we're going to cover three different interaction paradigms with bots. Uh, the first one is a request response paradigm where you basically ask it a question and it gives you an answer. The second paradigm we're going to cover is uh, server side alerts. So that means even if you're not doing anything, if something changes somewhere, the bot can send you a message. And the third paradigm we're going to cover is group based interactions. So group-based interactions are, if you guys have played like Werewolf or something on Telegram, then you know that, you know, uh, people can press something on one side of the board and then in the group itself, something else changes, right? So we're going to briefly cover these three different paradigms and then you can um, do whatever you want with this information, I guess. Right. So how do people use bots? A um, couple of things. Uh, they, you do input manipulation. So you get the bus timings, add numbers up, solve some quadratic equation. Um, and we are basically going to start with something straightforward like that. So we're going to start with the request response thing where you basically give it a command and then it does something for you. Uh, and we are going to start, jump straight into that. So the prereq for this is that you have a Telegram account and you have a Gmail account, right? Uh, for the guys who just entered, take a minute, get yourself together. And then um, once you are ready, we'll move ahead, I guess. And uh, for the Zoom folks, if 
anyone doesn't have a Telegram or Gmail account, then um, you know, please let us know. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna raise a few common Telegram bots that are already out there that you want to look at for inspiration. Um, so AirTrack is a bot that basically keeps track of prices for selected air routes. Uh, they are productivity bots such as the Gmail bot and Trello bot and things like that. So these are meant to com um, complement web applications. If you guys have purchased stuff on Lazada or whatever, you have got a Ninja Van Telegram bot that sends you stuff, right? So that's a very good example of something that you can automate in some ways. Um, so the Gmail bot is interesting. If you don't want to keep checking your email, it will send you a push notification on your Telegram when you get an email, for example. Um, and then this Werewolf Moderator bot thing that we talked about, right? Um, yeah. So our environment for today is going to be something called Google Colab. Uh, have, if you haven't heard of Colab, it's basically a Python environment on Google servers. Um, so there's no auto-completion, which sucks. But um, on the bright side, you don't need to set up your own environment. Everything's done there for you. And we don't need to worry about, oh, it doesn't work on my computer kind of problems, right? Um, so while waiting, um, just go to colab.research.google.com. Um, I know my slides say there's a link in the Zoom chat, but Zoom folks, I think you can just type this in, I guess. Uh, yeah, and create a notebook, right? So you can name the notebook whatever you want, um, but something along the lines of request response or something makes sense because that's the first thing that we're going to do. Okay, so I'll leave this on the screen for a minute and then um, I'll check in about a minute once everyone has sort of set up. Right, um, so this is my collab. Uh, it, yours will not look the same, but just turn on your thing and I'll give you guys an introduction. Okay, cool. So um, let me give you a quick introduction to collab. So the way collab works is that basically you have... Uh, you can think of it as a Word document that can run code, right? So um, you can basically write text like this, but you can also write code like this. And um, these code chunks basically can be executed independently. So the reason this is helpful to us in today's context is because this runs on Google servers and you don't need to worry about um, dealing with packages that are not working properly on your local machine or your Python installation being problematic or whatever. Uh, you have a standard environment for everyone to work with. Um, it's nice for teaching as well because we can write comments and documentation like this. So as we are going through this, if you want to take notes, you can just create um, like a cell. So it's called a text cell and then you can just like write whatever you want here, right? Um, yeah, okay. So uh, one thing we need to talk about is something called packages. So packages are basically libraries, like chunks of code that do certain things for you. Um, and Sometimes we need to install these packages into our environment so we can make use of them. So the command to do that in um, Colab is to basically put an exclamation mark in front of the word pip install and then the name of the package. So um, once you guys have a new Colab notebook already running, just create a new code cell and then type this in, right? Um, I'll just up the zoom a little bit so people can see, but basically this, right? Right, so once you've done that, then just press the run button. Um, if you get an error saying something like runtime restart required or something like that, then just click runtime restart runtime. Um, yeah, and then we can move back on to a couple more things before we can start coding. Right. Uh, so has everyone tried running that command? Do I need it on the screen a bit more? Everyone has it, right? Okay. Um, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a bot on Telegram. So it's very straightforward, open Telegram and search for this account called botfather, right? So once you search for botfather, um, you type in the command slash new bot to create a bot and you can name it whatever you want, right? Um, it will then ask you to give it a handle, like a username. Um, you can also name it whatever you want for the handle, but make sure it ends in the word uh, bot, right? So let me just show you, I created a bot yesterday for today's workshop. Um, let me show you what it looks like on my Telegram. Right, so this is my Telegram. Uh, it's a little small, but basically you can see that I uh, 
basically type the new bot command and then it asks you to create a bot. You give it whatever name you want to name it and you give it a handle. And then it will basically um, give you a bunch of information. The main thing you need to take note of is this token here, right? So just copy the token and put it somewhere. Um, and this is what we will use to control your bot basically, right? Right, so has everyone created their own Telegram bot already? Uh, if, if you've not done it, just raise your hand and then we can wait. Right. Uh, folks on Zoom, are you all okay? Okay, if nobody complains, then I presume that everyone's fine. Um, okay, cool. So once you've created a bot, we can move on to the part where we create a very simple Telegram bot, right? So um, once your packages are installed, which is that pip command that I told you to run, so exclamation mark pip install Python Telegram bot. Uh, once you've done that, and if your runtime crashes, press the restart button. Um, go to this URL, tinyurl.com slash tbot01. Um, there's going to be a bunch of code there. So just copy that code into a code block on Colab. Um, right. And then, uh, I will show you guys how to update, um, collab with your own token, and then you can run the bot. Uh, once you do that, basically you've created your first telegram bot. So we are basically like two minutes away from having your first telegram bot running. Right. Um, so the URL is tinyurl.com slash tbot01. Um, I'll also show you what it looks like, right? So, uh, open link. So basically it's a thing on my GitHub. It's got this bunch of code, right? So you just copy all of this. Um, and then let me bring my other window up. Yeah. And then you come here and then you just paste it, right? Um, once you've pasted it, there is a line here at the end of the first code block where it has a variable called token, right? So inside token, just replace it with your own token, right? tinyurl.com slash tbot01. Let me just flash it on the screen again. This one, right? So all our URLs will be structured like this. So the next one's gonna be tbot02 and then tbot03. Uh, yeah, just to make it easy for everyone, right? So has everyone gotten to this point where they've pasted the code in and then they've updated their token? Yeah. How do you get a token? Okay, so uh, very simple. You open Telegram, right? And you search for this user called Botfather, right? So just add Botfather, right? And once you search for him, um, you have this thing, you start the bot and then you type the command slash new bot. Then it will guide you through the process of creating a bot, right? Uh, so you can name it whatever you want, and then it'll ask you to also give it a, a username. The username needs to end with the word bot. That's all. That's the only requirement there is. Um, once you've done that, uh, it will give you a token, and that's the token you need to copy. Right, so you copy the token, you paste it here. Right. Um, once you get to this point, you can click on this cell, right? So the first cell, click on runtime, and then you can click um, run after. Right, so one more time, run time and then run after, or you can memorize the keyboard shortcut for this, right? So this will basically run all the code blocks all the way down to the bottom, right? Um, let's hope it's doing that. Okay, it crashed. Oh, right, I didn't install my own package. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, so your package installation will look something like this. Um, and then you might get this error like I'm doing, and then you just click restart runtime. And then you click yes. Uh, then once that's there, you can 
So this is a bit finicky sometimes, um, but you should be able to rerun this without any issues. Yeah. So the second time you run it after the runtime crashes, then you can just run it and then you will run fine. Then you click on the first code block, you click runtime and then run after, right? Uh, and then it will basically start running the final code block and you'll have this spinning thing here, right? Yours might be in one code block only. That's fine too. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, so once you have your Telegram bot, um, okay, I can't see. So let me just zoom in here, right? So this is the bot. Um, if you basically slash start, right, it will say hello with your name. And then if you type something like, hello, how are you? It will basically respond with you sit and whatever you sit. Right, so that's your first telegram bot, very straightforward. Uh, so let's get to this point for everyone and then we can continue. Anyone? Yeah, so uh, in bot father, you will see, uh, let me pull up my bot father. Yes, correct, that one. So if you go to Botfather, um, it will tell you that your bot can be accessed at whatever, right? So you click on that. Um, okay, so this is answering two questions on the Telegram chat. Um, how, why your Botfather UI is different might depend on your Telegram client. So mine is the Mac OS desktop client, but if you have a different Telegram client, that might look different. Um, right, so um, I think it's important to understand what's going on exactly here, right? So I'm going to go through the code so you understand what's going on. And then we're going to do another exercise where you sort of build a function yourself, right? So um, the first thing we did was obviously import the package, which I talked to you guys about. Um, and sometimes CoLab has some issues, you have to restart and disconnect the runtime or whatever. But after that, that works. Right. So we start looking at the main function, which is over here. Right. So what the main function does is we first declare this thing called an updater, and the updater takes in your token that you declared on top. Right. Then there's this dispatcher object that you need. So it basically dispatches the um, messages that come into a specific function. Right. Um, and this part here, these two lines basically declare um, command handlers. So what you're basically saying is that if I get the start command, call the start function. If I get the help command, call the help command, right? Uh, the help function, sorry. And if you don't send a command, so let's say you don't send slash start or slash help. Uh, if you send random text, then it will basically send the message to the echo function, right? So now you're wondering well, what is this start help command and echo, right? So let's look at start. So we have a start function here. So basically we're passing that function in as a parameter here in this line, right? Um, so the start function does something very simple. It basically just gets the name of the user, right? So update or effective user. And then it's going to reply to that message and saying hello and then first name, last name, right? So that is basically your, um, uh, the, the fact that it's echoing back whatever you said to it, right? Uh, the help command basically just says help. And then the last echo command uh, is very similar to the start function where it basically replies saying you said whatever, right? So now you understand how to basically set up a simple function and how to pass the input and then uh, do something with it. So the next thing we're going to try and do is that we're going to declare a function that basically solves the quadratic equation, right? Um, so the task here is very straightforward. Declare a, a command slash quadratic, take in the input the command gives you, and then make it output your, the two roots of the quadratic function, right? So you all know that, you know, the, the value is minus B plus minus square B square, whatever, right? Um, yeah, so basically do that. Uh, we'll give it 15 minutes. So until about 1057, um, write your own quadratic function. I think it should be pretty straightforward. And then uh, we can continue to the next part. Right, everyone okay? Uh, yes. So um, basically, now that you know how a function looks like, now you know how a start or echo function looks like, can you make a quadratic function as well? Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Which part? After echo, this one? Uh, same line as echo being, uh, this, these are parameters. Um, yeah, so the second uh, parameter is an optional parameter, which is why it's like underscore, right? Um, but the the SDK defines this as the function definition it expects. So we might as well just follow it. All right. So um, basically, uh, this is typed, right? So it tells you that update is an update object and callback context is a discarded variable. Um, yeah, you can just follow the signature, right? Okay. Right. So I will also very quickly start off writing the uh, quadratic thing. So if you guys need help just doing input passing, I've written the code here that basically passes the input for you. Uh, and it will give you the A, B, and C terms, right? Um, okay, yeah, I know it's a one-liner that looks very fancy, but it's just shortcuts, I guess. Okay, so um, I'm basically going to show you guys the solution for this um, so that we can sort of move ahead. Um, yeah, so effectively, um, the big part of it is just the math part, right? Um, so you define the discriminant, uh, you calculate it, and then you have your solution one and two, and then you reply with that solution. And then the other line that you need to do is basically define the command handler. So you can copy this, and then you can just call it quadratic. And then this should map to the function that you've created. So that in my case, it's just literally called quadratic, right? So we just call it quadratic here and then uh, you have this ready. So then what we can do is we'll stop my bot. Uh, stop. Okay, it takes a while. Okay, there we go. Um, and then we come back here and then run time, run after. Right, so um, the quadratic thing should basically look like this. And then um, let's see if my Telegram bot works. So we can just start to make sure it is working. Quadratic one, two, one. 
There we go. Right. So I'll just leave this up on the screen for like a minute so you all can take a look at the words and I read the commands and then we can move on. Right. I uh, remember to register a command handler. So that looks something like this. Anyone? Okay, uh, just an update to everyone because I messed up just now. It's reply text and not reply test, right? Uh, two people have pointed this out to me, so yes. <laughs> right here, reply text. Okay. Um, okay, so let's uh, move on. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, basically you figured out input manipulation, which is great. Um, a lot of bots are basically input manipulation oriented. So things like your SG bus bot and stuff like that are basically more complex versions of what we just did, right? Um, so, okay, uh, we've done this already. So uh, the next thing we can do is we can retrieve information from a database or some other location, right? Um, so be, how can we do that? Uh, let's create another command that can do something very simple. We can get a picture of a cat, right? So uh, there's this thing called cat as a service, right? Um, basically what you need to do is uh, slash cat should send you a picture of a cat, right? Um, and the API you need is basically update the message or reply underscore photo. And then you just put in the URL there. So this should be like a two minute thing because it's a very straightforward function. Um, so let's quickly try and do this one time. And then uh, once we have cat photos, we can move on, right? Uh, so just create like slash cat or something, I don't know. Pick a command for yourself. The, the important thing that, you need, that I need to tell you is the API for it, which is reply photo, <clears throat> right? Uh, so we're a little bit behind time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to code this on the spot as well. And then y'all can see me do this. Um, and then uh, we all have cat photos. All right. Okay. So we can basically define another function that basically looks like the quadratic thing. 
um, I don't know what they call it, cat or something, right? Um, and then uh, all you need to do is basically define the URL, which let me just copy paste it here. Right, so this is your cat as a service.com slash cat, and that gives you your URL. And then you just need to do update.message.reply underscore photo, photo URL, right? Then as I previously talked about, you need to register a command handler for this as well. So you register a command handler called cat and cat. And then uh, in theory, this should work, right? So let's just stop this. And then uh, we restart this from here. And then hopefully this works. Tada, cat photos. Yeah. Okay, great. So we now have cat photos. Um, okay, so uh, if you guys already basically follow what I did, you would have noticed that you keep getting the same photo back, right? Um, so the reason is because Telegram caches URLs. So what you can do, a very simple trick, is you can make Telegram keep thinking that each of these URLs are new. So you basically generate a number, right, which is a random number up to like 1 million. Um, and then you basically uh, like put ID equals number. Like honestly, you can put whatever you want, right? It doesn't really matter. The, the point is that we append a random number to the end of the URL just so that every time you press the thing, you get a new number, right? And as a result, then you end up with new photos, right? So uh, just to show you how that works, um, stop, low. Yeah. One time. So if you do slash cat, you get new cat photos every time, right? Because um, what what Telegram is seeing is cat question mark ID equals some new number, so it caches that number instead. Yes. Okay. Sure. Uh, no, I, I think I already made you guys import it early on. Yeah. Didn't get it working yet. Okay, fine. We'll wait like a couple of minutes. Yes. Uh, this side, everyone got text on your telegram. Yeah, we are configuring it from the previous one because you left coded this. 
No, but I've literally imported random in the template I gave them. Seriously? Yes. So, oh. uh, for those who cannot run the random stuff, uh, just adding this one line for random import random. Yeah. Or if you want to write proper Python and not like this guy for random import random in. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm getting attacked now. <laughs> okay, so I think what I will do is I will move on to the next part of the workshop um, and we'll go on to the second paradigm of bots, right? Um, that's fine, you know. No, no. Okay. Um, yeah, so we talked about retrieving information from somewhere else, which is what the bus bot does. Um, the next type of paradigm we're going to cover is something called um, request response bot, uh, sorry, uh, server-side alerts, right? So what's a server-side alert? If you guys have seen the rain cocoa bot, it can send you a message. Okay, let me just show you what that looks like, right? Uh, let's maintain a minute. There's this bot called Rain Coco, and it basically sends you a telegram alert every time it starts raining, right? And then it tells you where it's raining. Uh, so this matters to me because I ride a motorcycle and I don't want to get stuck in the rain. Um, so the, the unique thing about this is that you don't need to text the bot and ask it when it's raining. It can proactively send you a message, right? So this paradigm is basically server-side alerts where um, when something changes on the server somewhere, you alert the users to it, right? Uh, yeah, okay, so da, da, da. right, so yeah, so it started raining or some the results were released, and then you want to get alerted when something updates somewhere else, right? So, um, the next spot we're going to make is basically going to alert you when our website changes. So, um, the question becomes, um, how do we interact with a website programmatically, like through code, right? Um, so we're gonna sidetrack a little bit into something called HTTP verbs, right? So HTTP is the protocol you use to connect to the internet, right? So HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, right? And in the HTTP spec, there are a couple of these things called verbs defined. So these verbs are basically get, post, put, delete. These are like four of the few of them which are defined. Um, so when you, for example, go to a website like google.com, you are basically making a get request to google.com. And then you basically get the Google website. When you submit something to google.com, so for example, um, let's say you go into Gmail or something and you press the send button, right? You are posting a request to Google, right? And then similarly put and delete are basically to update information and delete information, right? So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a get on our web page, and then we're gonna check the text on the web page. And if something has changed, then we alert yourself. Okay, so um, okay, right. So um, for this, we're gonna create a new notebook on Colab. So just click the file and then new notebook, right? Um, and then like we talked about importing packages earlier, you need to import two packages. Uh, the first one is Python Telegram bot, and the second one is requests. So you can write them in two separate lines and then execute them individually. Uh, because Python Telegram bot will probably complain and your runtime needs to restart and whatever else, right? Um, once you have done these two things, uh, you go to tinyrl.com slash tbot02, right? Um, and then copy the contents into a new code block, right? Um, yeah, pretty much that. And then uh, there's a token variable again, and you just need to update it with your own token. So I'll leave this on the screen and then you guys just execute this and then I will live code this out and then you can move from there, right? Sorry? Run after, oh no, for the runtime thing, you just click the, the play button. So just click and import the package. Oh, you can
Everyone has done this already. Uh, and then I will just live code this. Uh, okay, so uh, let me pull this up. Yeah. Right, so you should basically see something like this on your thing. And you should have pasted your token. So uh, let me copy my token over as well. Uh, here. Right. Okay. So you should see this thing called manual poll, right? This one function here. Uh, we will slowly modify this function now, right? Um, I need to fix some Wi-Fi thing. Give me a second. Uh... Okay, Zoom people, I might disconnect for a second. I'm sorry. Okay, um, cool. So what we're gonna do now is um, we're basically going to uh, query a web page that looks like this, right? So it's gonna have like this color of the day thing on it. Um, and I'll give you the URL for that for this shortly, right? 
Um, so what you need to do is you need to message yourself when the color of the day changes from green to blue, right? So where is this website? This website is running on my computer. I will send you the link shortly, right? Um, and then basically you need to send the message to yourself, lah, right? Um, to do that, you need to get your chat ID. So how you do that is there's this bot called user info bot. You can just text that bot, uh, like say hi to it or whatever. And then it will tell you what your chat ID is, right? Um, the URL I'm going to give you guys is running on my computer, which is also doing the zoom and everything. So don't go and DDoS it or whatever, because then it will crash for everyone. Right. Um, so let me, uh, put this onto the screen. Uh, Hey, y'all stop it. Yeah. These people here. Okay, so this is the URL that y'all need, right? Um, it's basically running on my machine. Yeah, because I'm running on data. Yeah. So really don't. It started. I cannot access it yet. It started. Uh, sure. Yeah. Just loading for me. I can't access it. I think it's dangerous for that. Wait. No, it works for me. Right. Uh, let me. Uh. Here we are, so. And I'll paste this in the Zoom chat as well. Hey, you should hit VPN or not? You should hit VPN. Hey, access to this website is restricted by NUS. Lamau. <laughs> NUS block, yes. NUS block. Does HTTP work? No, no, anyone's blocking it. Look at this. If you're on anyone's Wi Fi, that's it. Okay, sorry to all the in person people. <laughs> uh, you can. Oh, okay, yeah, it will work on Collab. Collab will not complain because Collab will access it on Collab servers. So you can't see this, uh, but it will work on Collab. Right. Uh, if HTTPS doesn't work, change to HTTP, I guess. Uh, both in theory should work. Um, yeah, so um, basically what you can do is, I'm going to just live code this so you can see, uh, because some of you might not be familiar with the request library. So uh, we define a variable called r, request don't get uh, this URL, right? Um, so, the the task here is basically the website currently says oh, is it a yeah? uh where oh uh, yes yeah. okay, i can barely see my own typing yes sorry i cannot quote today why can't i type today <laughs> yeah, is it correct now <laughs> Yeah, okay, so currently it says green. Eventually I'll change it to say blue and you want it to basically drop your text when it says blue, right? So uh, for that, what we're gonna do is, where's my mouse? I can't even see my mouse. Uh, Right, so um, what this line of code does is that if, when we call this website and we do a get request to it, 
if the word blue is in the content, it sends a message to you and then it sleeps, right? For one second. So we need this entire thing to run over and over again. So we can basically set up a while true, uh, while true and put all this in that loop, right? Um, and in theory, basically what they should do is that uh, when I update the website to say blue, it will um, uh, alert you, lah, right? So we can run this and give it a shot. So let me install my own packages first. Yeah, um, this is basically how you check the content of the get request. So as I mentioned earlier, you need to go to this thing called slash use, the, this bot called user info bot. It will tell you what your unique chat ID is. That is how Telegram identifies your account, right? So you need to get that chat ID and then uh, you can send a message to specific people like this, basically. So as long as a person has started a bot before, you can basically send them messages, now, right? Um, don't use this to spam your friends. Telegram will ban you. Uh, a uh, user info bot. So at user info bot. Right. Okay. So I'm going to just run this. Okay. And then uh, we have my Telegram bot here. Right. Okay. So right now nothing is happening, but um, I will update the website to say blue and then hopefully it works. Uh huh, and then you get this message saying it's blue, right? So if you go to the website now, it will say blue. Um, but if I change it back to like green or something, then it will stop sending this message. Uh, what website? It's this website here. Yes, the Angrop one. Um, try accessing it on your phone or mobile data instead. Yes, it's because I'm running on my computer. There's no SSL, so it doesn't work. If you don't want to get that error, you can just change to HTTP instead, and then you won't get the error. Uh, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because it's running on my computer and there's no proper SSL for it. Just trust it. I will not attack your computer. Or you can remove the S from the HTTPS and it should still work. Uh, for the Zoom people, one more time, uh, the bot to get your chat ID is called at user info bot. I will just send the name in the chat. Yeah, just text this guy and then it'll tell you what your user info is. Oh yeah, sure.
Yeah, I'm going to change it back to green for a bit. It's green now. So if you want to check if it's green, just change the text to green. Yeah. Yeah, so the thing is, I, I will keep stopping it. Okay, uh, I'm going to change it back to blue if you want to test. Uh, okay, so now it's blue, so then um, we get this very useful in blue message. I'm going to let this run for another like one or two minutes because my data will probably die because it's uh, so yeah. I'm going to okay, do you all get it running? Yeah, you all get it running? Yeah, yeah. Some people okay. No, I don't mean guys, you know, I'll find the email for even though it's not there, right? I think you might pull that. This is the bot sending you. The bot sending you. Yeah. Remember you said that it will send you a message if the word blue is in the content, it will send you a message. Uh, I don't know what to do. So the bot. So you can change this text to say like hello on the bot. And you will send like oh then if I want to the like stop this and just stop the bot. Then then just stop the bot. Then just stop the bot. Stop work, I'll show you where. Wait, what was it? No, no, it's just the way it interrupted. Oh, it's just a collapse. Because it got interrupted halfway through execution. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it depends on how you build it, okay, this way. Um, but if Typically, you will set up a system where you will tell people register for updates or something. So click here to register or send sub slash subscribe to register. Then when they do that, you can get that idea. And once you want that, you can go back. In the future, you can message them. Uh, we're going to exclude the simple board that sort of does this. Um, but um, you can look at the reference board and remove from there if you want to. Oh, 
where we get alerts from the server instead of you sending a request to the server directly and asking for information, right? Um, so the last dynamic we're going to talk about is this thing called group dynamics, right? So werewolf moderator is a good example of that. Um, if you guys have played Quisarium, it's another one of those fun games in groups, right? Um, so for this, we're going to do something called attendance bot. Um, I'm not going to make you guys implement it because there's a bit of complexity involved, but what I will do is I'll show you how it works and then I will go through the code with you and I'll release the code to you guys and you can, can run it yourself at home if you want. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, if you want to look at the code, it's at tinyurl.com slash tbot03. Um, yeah. Uh, and eventually when you look at the site, there's a collab link that you can go to directly as well. Uh, no need to copy this down the quite pointless in you trying to cut this. Just click on the T-Bot one, right? Um, so for this, Tingyan will be helping me out demonstrating how it works. Um, give me a second and I'll set this up. So just press it, press start when you tell me to. Yes. And then when you tell me to. Yes. Okay, so um, I'll just show you what I'm doing. I'm basically installing the packages on Colab and then uh, dealing with this runtime problem. All right, I forgot to paste my token. Okay, 
Um, so there's this Telegram bot attendance bot thing running. Um, so I'll show you how it works, right? So basically I will type slash start and um, it basically says, welcome to the attendance bot and your username has been stored, which is what you asked about earlier, right? How to store a person's information. So we've done that. Uh, Tingyan, can you also start it? Okay, so Tingyan is the fixed student in this class, okay? Done? Yeah. Okay, so um, then what, I have a command called uh, start attendance. Uh, I believe, right? And then it will ask me to choose a class and then I, this button pops up so I can click it and it selects this. So Tingyan got a message that basically says mark attendance, please press this, right? So now Tingyan, can you press the mark attendance? So you see when Tingyan presses mark attendance, this name thing pops up on the message. So I'm updating an already sent message. Uh, I'm also a student in this class. So if I click mark attendance, then my own name also pops up here. Right. So this is the concept of how these group dynamic bots work, where you go and select your role or whatever, or whoever you want to lynch or whatever, and then it updates a message. Right. So this is a demo of that. And then of course, Tingyan is going to screw with it. And this is what happens now. Right. Um, okay. So I'm going to run you through um, a basic idea of how the bot works, um, like from a high level, and then we'll go into the code. Right. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, um, basically how this works is that, uh, we have, um, three sets of information that we store. We store a mapping from a class to students. So you know how many students are in the class. Um, we store a mapping for attendance session for a class. So class to session, and we store a mapping of a person's, uh, username. So in Zingyan's case, at Zingyan, or my case at Azim to their, um, user ID, that number that we had earlier, right? Um, so when you start the attendance session, the first part, uh, we basically uh, check who's in the class. And then when they click slash start, we make sure that we store their user ID, right? Then uh, when you run slash um, start attendance, it creates an attendance session. It sends a message and it stores that message in the session thing, the class to session uh, database. In our case, there's a variable, uh, but you might store in a database, right? And then I know all the students in that class, the class of students mapping. So I send all of them a message. The same way you guys sent the message earlier to yourself, we use the exact same API to send a message to all the students in the class and they get told to mark attendance, right? So when they tap slash mark attendance, we have a message handler that comes back. We go back to the session. We see the message that we initially sent saying that, you know, who has marked the attendance. And then we edit that message to add the person's name to it, right? So basically you need to store the message that was previously sent out so that you can come back to it and edit it later on, right? Um, so that's the high level flow, lab, right? Um, so I'll show you how that works in, in the code itself. Um, right at the start, we basically uh, define this variable called class to students, right? So we have a class, uh, whatever this thing is, and then the two students are as you mentioned in. Then we also have these other variables. Um, so students to class is just a reverse of the mapping. Um, then you have a class to session and a username to IDs, right? Um, so in the main function, okay, I actually cannot see what I'm looking at. Yes, in the main function, we define um, this thing called a conversation handler, right? So you can look up how this works, but basically when you call start attendance, it calls a start attendance session, right? So this function here. Um, and when we go to it, which is here, um, you choose a class, right? And then it returns the class to you. Uh, after the start attendance session is called, uh, let's go back to my main function. Um, he, let me see, where is it? Yeah, uh, it calls class handler after that, after you select um, a class, right? Um, so for class handler is where the so-called magic happens, right? We basically get the chat ID. So chat ID is me, la. I started the session, right? And then we create this thing called an attendance session object. Inside there, we store the chat ID, that message that we sent, because we want to save the message ID and the message text, right? Um, the rest of this code is basically just um, sending the message to people and serializing this to a, a, a dictionary, right? Uh, later on, when mark attendance is called, so um, where is my main function? 
is mark attendance. When this is called, uh, and you go to the mark attendance um, function, what it does is that it goes there and it pulls out the session that we just stored, containing the chat ID, the message ID, and the whatever, right? And the message text. And then what we do is we do an edit message. So we do an edit message, we just pull the information out and we update it by just um, adding the, the, the list of users to that message now, right? So um, I know I'm doing this at a very high level and if you want to digest the code, you should look through it yourself at your own time. But the idea is basically very straightforward. Once you have the message for that specific session stored somewhere, you can come back and you can edit it and you can add whatever else you want to it. So this is the same way Werewolf and Quisarium and whatever works. They send one message containing the current state and when people lock in their selections or whatever on their own site, it will go back and edit that message, right? Um, yeah, so that's the high level thing. I, there is no point in me going through line by line right now because um, everyone will have a different understanding of what's going on, right? Um, but the code is there on GitHub. You can go and take a look. And you can run this yourself as well. So the main thing you need to do is basically add your token. And um, there is this uh, class to students mapping. Just go there and then add your name. So um, right now it's kind of hard-coded. It expects your name to be here, your Telegram name, whatever that name might be, as well as your username. And it's case sensitive. Um, for the purpose of the demo, I didn't make it very resilient. But I mean, if you want to, then you can go and solve all these sensitivity problems and whatever, right? Okay, so um, that's the last uh, group dynamics paradigm. Um, I'm going to explain two other small things and then we'll basically be done with the workshop. Uh, so if you remember at the end of your main function for the first two demos we did, there was this thing called updater that start polling. So what does polling mean, right? So in Telegram, there are two ways of dealing with updates from a bot. The first way is polling. The second way is webhook. How polling works is that when a user sends a message to Telegram, Telegram um, updates the information on this API called the get updates API. Then your program needs to manually query this get updates API, get a response, and then do whatever you want, send a message back to Telegram or process it or whatever, right? So when you do updated or start polling, what is happening is that every like one second or half a second or whatever, it's calling get updates API and checking if there are new updates, okay? The other paradigm you can have is this thing called webhook. Right? So a webhook is when you tell Telegram, when something happens, contact me directly. Right? So when a user sends a message to Telegram, Telegram directly contacts your program and says, Yo, your user sent this message. What do you want to do? Then you can choose to respond to it. Right? You process it and you send it back to Telegram and then Telegram forwards it back to the user. So Telegram is always in the middle, but the question is whether you want to go and ask Telegram, is there an update or you want Telegram to come to you and tell you that you know, there has been a change. Make sense? So these are the two differences. In most cases, people set up webhooks because you are running it on a server and you don't want to keep querying something because that is resource intensive, right? Um, yeah. Uh, so a sample implementation of how the webhook sort of thing looks like can be found here. The slides will be sent to you guys. You can just look at this link, right? Um, so some further reading and resources. If you want to find out more about Telegram Bot API, you can go to the Telegram's website and they have all the other functions that you can do with the Telegram Bot. So there's a lot of unique things you can do. You can set up games in HTML. You can create custom keyboards. You can do buttons, all sorts of funky stuff, right? Telegram also accepts payments. So there's this thing called ShopBot, which is their demo ShopBot. Um, and you can basically go to that bot and you can make purchases. Um, Telegram also has a login API. So you know how you can do login with Google or login with Facebook. You can log in with Telegram as well, right? And as I mentioned, you can create games. Um, today, we did our workshop in Python. Uh, so if you want to find out more about the Python set of APIs, you can go to this URL and there's a header called learning by example. So there are a whole bunch of different use cases that you can go and read and try different use cases if you want to figure out something that fits whatever project that you have in mind. Um, if you don't want to do Python, there is a very good Node.js API as well. And there are tons of APIs for other languages, including Java, C Sharp, and whatever else, right? So um, if you don't want to do Python or Node, plenty of options out there for you. The Telegram API is a REST API. So if you've got some funky language that has no good API, no good SDK, you can write the wrapper around it yourself as well, right? Uh, some good practices. Your Telegram bot token is very precious. 
uh, if anyone else gets a hold of that token, then you can basically go and like mess with other people's bond. So if you guys are going to use Git for whatever thing you're working on, don't commit your token to Git, right? Um, there are, if you go to GitHub actually and you search for like token equals, you'll see a whole bunch of people have submitted their tokens on Git. Um, and then GitHub goes and warns them, you know, you have a token here. So don't do that, right? Uh, inject your tokens into your code using environment variables. That's the best way you can do things. Um, your username and user ID are precious as well. If you guys can keep getting pulled into those random spam groups, and then if you're going to put your chat ID outside in public, then people can text you also. So don't do that. Um, also manage your packages properly. If you're going to use external packages in your project, then use a proper, proper package manager instead of just having things really nearly, right? Um, okay, so what we did today, we did request response, server-side alerts, and group-based interactions. All these, all the demos that I did live are available on these three collab links. So you can go there and just take a look. Uh, and the Git repo with everything we've done today is on my GitHub. So you can click on that as well. Right, so that brings us to the end of today's workshop. And we would appreciate it if you left some feedback for us. Um, so just scan the QR code and give us some feedback. I'll flash this again in a second, but uh, in the next two weeks, we're doing two more workshops. Um, data wrangling with pandas, as well as introduction to machine learning with scikit-learn. So Statistics and Data Science Society is conducting this with us. And if you're interested, then please come on down. Uh, I think it'll be quite interesting, right? So um, thank you everyone. And please leave us some feedback. Thank you. No, 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 please don't clap. Just one more thing to add on. Uh, earlier you mentioned don't commit your bot token, right? Uh, on that note, if you are not planning to reuse your bot after this workshop, you can go to bot father and just delete that bot. Yes. And that token will be invalidated. Correct. Uh, you can create, that. this telegram is the upper limit of like, I think 20 bots or something you can create. So you can create a lot of bots, right? Um, so if you're not going to use it, just go and delete your bot and then create a new one when you're ready to start. Lah. Cool, so I'll leave this running and then uh, we're basically done for today.